Welcome back to Dreams. Got a game here called Hole by Wargarble. And this may be a little bit different than the other Dreams games I played. I believe this is a, well it says they're a visual novel. It says this is an original story by me. Some content may not be suitable for younger dreamers. Thank you. And if you hear like crackling in the background, I got food cooking right now. So every now and then I may pause the game. So let's go. Wargarble presents... Coal. So it says it's a visual novel. Uh, There's going to be a bunch of weird screenshots, I believe. Definitely weird. Introduction, James Odin. This is going to be a lot of reading. My name is James Odin, and I used to be a freelance journalist. I spent a little over 10 years covering stories in southern Ohio and the surrounding tri-state area. Last year in the middle of August was the moment that I made the decision to retire from journalism. This rooted itself back in December of 2014. It was on the 20th that I received word of a mass disappearance of, small neighborhood, of a small neighborhood on the west side of Hamilton County, Cincinnati, Ohio. Only in Ohio. This was easily, uh, this was easily the strangest story that I have ever encountered. It all happened in the span of one week. Not a single friend or family member called. No mail was delivered and no garbage was collected. It wasn't until a group of kids stumbled upon the neighborhood while on a walk. They said the amount of vegetation made it seem like it had been abandoned for years, yet cars were still resting with license plates attached, lawn, uh, lawn decorations, etc. I arrived at this neighborhood on the 21st and I came across what was determined to be uh, the only evidence found. It was a camera and a journal that belonged to a resident by the name of Don Ross. It documented from December 15th to the 18th, four days of Don's experience. I've arranged this material showcasing parts of Don's journal that I have transcribed both clean and verbatim, followed by my own analysis. Following this will be a selection of photos that I believe are related to the portion of writing. Okay. I've been able to identify most of these who are involved thanks to the cooperation of the United States Postal Service, who uh, ungrudgingly gave a list of names of every resident. The license plates of the vehicles also came up uh, with residents' names when searched. Please remember to keep an open mind and understand that we still don't know the whereabouts of anyone involved at the time of this writing. Thank you. Okay. D Don's journal entry, uh, December 15, 2014. So, if you don't already know, I'm very bad at reading, so this is going to be a hassle. I'll try, though. It is the strangest feeling to know something, while at the same time not knowing it. Like I know exactly where I am, yet it's alien to me. It's so damn maddening. What's strange is that I feel the same way about you. I'm aware of you, and the more I try to understand myself, the more I understand who you are. What you're for, like what the purpose is of my knowing about you. But I don't know you. All of this is the reason why I've decided to write everything down, to take pictures. It's for you. The house I woke up in yesterday was dark and I was in pain. I could feel very... I could feel every nerve in my body firing off together. I hope that one day you feel this too. It's surprising to know just how fast you can learn to appreciate what pain really is and how natural it is for us. The suffering only comes from being afraid of it, but taking it in as it appears is like a wave in the ocean. My breathing was the only thing I could hear. I was propped up against the side of a bed uh, and the carpet was soft. All I could smell was water. There was a light on the doorway to the hall but there weren't any windows no lamps or candles no source it was just splashes of light like little glowing islands in a sea of darkness i recognized where i was though i noticed the old solid wood of the bedposts and dressers and the old two tv on the floor this was the house of an elderly couple that a friend and me would help out on occasion i found a camera in that room i took it felt compelled to i'm quite sure i've overstayed my welcome though I could feel all of this energy, and all of it was insisting that I leave. James Odin I can't fathom Dan's mental state here. Uh, I'd assume that under such extreme circumstances that one would struggle to accurately recall any amount of fine details, yet he has no trouble doing so. This house that Don wakes up in belongs to Jack and Mart Mary Lynn, and the name of the, the mentioned friend is Chris Edwards. I find it worth noting that Don doesn't write anyone's names. It's quite puzzling since he appears to be taking... Uh, talking to someone specific. The most notable thing about these three photographs is how strange the lighting is. If there is any truth to his statement regarding the non-existent light source, then, well, I'm not sure what to think about that. Please just keep in mind that I've decided to keep these written notes for myself. 
as a means to share the small amount of info that I do know in hopes that somebody reading this will know something and adamantly uh, and admittedly writing my thoughts down is like uh, like this is quite therapeutic so we got some photos coming up and this is what Don saw waking up in his room or waking up in the uh, old people's room TV on the floor door open uh, very little light in the hallway photo of the front door and I took a photo at the front entrance facing towards the stairs in the room he woke up in and plus another room in the background Don's journal entry continued you can see the living room from the front door so I took a photo and saw the old couple during the flash it startled me but before I could really where are they Maybe in the next set of photos we'll see. Uh, but before I could fully react to what I saw, the house rumbled, making dust and debris fall, blocking my vision. Uh, the front door swung open and I was thrown out into the front lawn. The wind felt incredible. I sat there for a while, almost falling asleep. There was a noise, a sort of screech. I could hear it in the wind. I could hear it behind me. And I turned around to see what... Uh, looked like a fog coming up from behind the house. I went back there to check it out, and my old friend was there. I only recognized him from his clothes. His head was missing. He sat on an old bench sw uh, swing on the back porch. There was a large branch protruding from his coat, and where his neck would have been, or where his neck would have been, I couldn't tell how much of him was him, or if his torso was just three tree limbs. The screech came from a bird that was on the branch. It was tough to see it through uh, the fog that billowed out of it. Uh, it looked like he was breathing quite heavily. His hands were shaking, then he would laugh a bit. It felt like hours that I was standing there watching him. There was a movement in his coat, and all of these other broken branches came out of him, followed by a group of butterflies. All of the branches were moving around and swaying a bit, moving in and out of him. His breathing stopped, and his hands went still. I took the pictures. It is really is, it really is the strangest feeling. Let's check these photos out. Oh, uh, James' input. Uh... That was the moment, the moment that made me question the authenticity of the photos while at the same time made me fear how genuine they might actually be. It was such a contradiction that I couldn't shake, and it made me understand Don's own contradictions. It is impossible for these things to happen to the human body, yet here is the evidence telling me otherwise. I've shown the photograph of Jack and Mary Lynn to their daughter. I've shown the photograph of Chris Edwards to his parents. I share their confusion and understand their heartbreak is genuine. And at that time, I didn't matter that we lacked understanding of what was happening because, because what we did understand is that they were gone. Okay. What's these photos? Whoa. Okay, that's Jack and Mary Lynn. The old people's house. That's creepy. <laughs> Jesus. They're like bloated and, well, I guess Jack's missing a face. Mary still sort of has hers. It looks like an eye's popping out too in uh, Mary's face. Ugh. And there's Chris, Don's friend. No head, just tree. There's some lovely butterflies though. What the hell's going on here? Don's journal entry 2, December 16, 2014. I used to be obsessed with dreaming. They would be so vivid and seem like nightmares at times, but my brain never woke itself. It would treat a nightmare like an everyday occurrence. I learned to enjoy it a bit, though. Today was the first time a dream had woke me up. I was floating in a black void with a human figure in front of me. His face was made up of several other human faces, but I could see that its eyes were my own. Once I realized I was staring at myself, I woke up. Everyone, everyone here is being pulled somewhere else. Maybe it's to that void... The men in the backyard were separated, by, uh, separating by strands and was slowly stretching up to the sky. The folks next door, the man on the floor, wouldn't stop screaming. Stepping into that house was a mistake. He hasn't taken any breaths either, just constant screaming. The girl in the kitchen was quiet though. Men will deny what is happening to him. Because of that, he is a pain, swimming against the uh, current too, which he certainly drowned. Sorry if my reading isn't the best. <laughs> uh, James, uh, I got to learn a bit more about Don from taking, uh, talking to his brother Philip. He lived 40 minutes away from the neighborhood uh, with a lovely wife and adorable 7-year-old daughter who reminded me of my own. 
Philip had told me that Don was on track to become a music teacher and was planning on moving to New York with his girlfriend, which he stressed about since it uh, would require him to move away from the family. Family seems to have been everything to him, but I could, f but I find it odd that there is hardly any mention of them throughout his journal entries. Don seems to be infatuated with his situation, almost exploring it like a child. But I do find it a bit uh, a rough read, as it is obvious of his changing mental state. I also can't help but wonder why Don is the only person not incapacitated by whatever this uh, is that's happening. It almost does. Uh, it almost does seem that nature is allowing him to investigate. Of the three photographs, only two have been identified. It, in the second photo, the screaming man has been identified as William Gregory. And the woman in the third photo is Amy Combs, both identified by a mutual friend. The person in the first photograph could not be identified. Oh, was this the man like splitting into strands going up to the sky? Dude. Oh, God. Uh, William Gregory, the screaming man. Just. And he described the two as constant screaming, no breaths in between, just a forever yell. Uh, that's horrible to think about. And then the quiet woman. I wonder why she was quiet. She has no head. This is Amy Combs. Okay. Entry 2 continued by Don Chrysalis. Inside of Chrysalis is where a transformation happens. It's where a caterpillar breaks down all that is it is and naturally resembles itself into something that looks completely different, yet it's still itself. That is what's happening here. You do see that, don't you? You will. I stood watching those vines on the wall slowly taking, uh, slowly take every, over everything. The couple on the couch stretched and twitched. The person standing on the back porch with the arm of a child and the mouth of a dog protruding from them. You see? I'm looking at all of it in a way that I know you aren't. I find it to be absolutely... Beautiful. That's disturbing. A year and a half ago, Don would have been right about me. Everyone who knows... Sorry. My light just flickered on and off. Uh, everyone whose photograph looks like they're going through something torturous. And all of the hurt and tears from friends and loved ones made it hard to be viewed as beautiful. But where I am right now, well, I understand what Don has realized. The first of the two photos is something I believe to be quite substantial. Don's mention of a chrysalis is related to the reoccurring of butterflies. Uh, reoccurring butterflies, and I find that this house, in a way, resembles a chrysalis. Uh, but maybe more accurately, the neighborhood itself is, an act, is acting as one. Even though these residents are physically changing, they are still who they originally were. Who they started out as. Jeez. There's vines on the walls too. Stuff coming, stuff coming out of the ceiling. People on the couches. Uh, Frank reads on the left, and Julia reads on the right. Ew. Dog face, arms. I guess baby arms. Jeez. Uh, entry two continued. Today I did something. I let out a part of myself that I suppose was always there. It's a part that exists within all of us, really. I thought I had accepted everything, but it broke me. It was in that moment that I took the life of an infant. Oh, uh, boy. It was lying in the garden of a house nearby with plants' roots hanging out of its belly. It choked in between its cries, and it shattered me. I couldn't stand it. You'll hate me for it. You'll call me a murderer. Since humans have existed, there has always been violence. And common sense will tell you that it existed before humans as well. It's a part of nature. I was absolutely lost. I sat and sulked in the middle of, of a front lawn. My hands were covered in goddamn blood and my mind was stuck in a vicious loop. A repetition of thoughts and worry. But me deciding to drive away was the best thing I could have done. It really hit me about the importance of opposites. Black and white, solids and spaces, ups and downs, old and young, religious and atheist, peace and violence. The list goes on and on. One of these simply could not exist without the other. How do you know that you are a good person? A light, will, a light will always cast a shadow, and that light isn't noticeable without the darkness that surrounds it. I needed to commit the act of violence for me to fully appreciate my own peacefulness. But a couple of hours into that drive, I spotted them floating, and even though no turns were taken, they were led me right back to where I started. That was rough to read. That was, that was rough to read. 
Jesus. James, uh, a week and a half ago, before I started writing any of this, I encountered at a, I had an encounter at a local bar. This person was in a suit. They sat next to me. Their face was patched with different color skin. Their hands had it too. They ordered a water, and when it arrived, they looked down and and cupped the glass in their hands and held it there. About two or three minutes went by before they looked over at me. I wasn't quite sure what I was looking at. It was like I was staring at every type of human being merged into one. You are responsible for how the world is, they said. You didn't ask to be here, yet you are. When you join the dance, uh, sorry, when you join the dance, the responsibility of existing uh, good and bad life and death is on you. It's on everyone. It was on Tess. As soon as they said her name, I nearly screamed and cried. Tess was my youngest daughter. She passed away two years ago from a brain aneurysm. You know she lives in Ar Argentina? She's had a year and a half. A tear rolled down my face. The smell stood and left. Their glass was empty. A lot has happened since the day I found that Cameron journal. I've gone through immense changes mentally anyhow, and I'm, I understand that life is never guaranteed for anyone. There is no written rule that has to be a certain length. It can be as long as it needs to be, or as short. It's what makes living lively. There is beauty in un there is a beauty in its unpredictability, a certain type of excitement, but mostly it makes me truly feel what it is to exist. That I am as big as the universe and I am as small as one atom. That I am as small as an atom. And like the universe, I will always go on. People getting lifted into the sky. This is like Death Stranding a bit. Weird. Still, still Journal 2 entry. Uh, but as my mental state evolved, all of my surroundings began changing. I know that this is all. I know that this was all a part of my entire metamorphosis. James, uh, this sudden change in the environment is, is a bit disorienting. I can't even imagine what it's like actually being there when it occurred. But I can accurately state that the tree in this photo is a tree in Don's backyard. His brother recognized uh, the multiple trunks. As of today, December 3rd, 2017, 26 neighborhoods across the United States have been reported abandoned with every resident missing. Wow, okay. Uh, of, the, of those 26, 13 of them have had evidence like this. Some are journals and photos, some are drawings, audio recordings, and recorded videos. Is it currently being analyzed just as I am doing with this? Things are changing. I found that I get a ridiculous anxiety when I'm away from my family now. I'm afraid, I'm afraid that I'll be oblivious and that they will vanish, just like Don Ross, just like Jack and Mary Lynn. Just like Chris Edwards, just like everyone. Oh, this was the picture of the backyard. Okay. That this is happening everywhere else. Uh, James said that uh, it's being documented and recorded. So there's, I guess, there's always one person there to take everything down, leave notes, journals, videos, pictures, etc. Okay, uh, Don's Journal, Entry 3. I can feel everything. So much feeling. So much movement. Jesus, it's so goddamn difficult to write now. My skin, my face, my neck, my back, <laughs> myself, uh, my life, my eyes, my eyes, my eyes. And it goes on. It feels it feels unbelievable. No pain, no pain anymore. I know, you, I know you'll feel this too. You'll feel it. You'll feel it. My eyes are shifting. What I see is change. What I feel is all there is... What I feel is all there is. I have to get this out. Help me get this out. Help me, please. There's a yellow light, a glow. It reminds me of you. I hope you're better now. I hope things are better now for you. You deserve to be better. Please don't be pain. Don't be pain. It's all there is. It's all there is. I have to get this out uh, before I'm gone. Before I go to the space in between the rooms. Uh, the place we can't see. You'll see it. You'll be here after the windmill with your family. You'll be the last. I'm sorry. I'm sorry it's happening. And that's Dawn. Jeez. Oh, God. Ever shifting face. Uh. Yo. He really took a bunch of selfies. Jeez. <laughs> uh, James Odin. 
Change is inevitable. Nothing is ever stagnant. Your body, the earth, and this great universe you're part of is constantly moving. And it's all in a relationship with one another. In the second journal entry, Don talks about opposites. I didn't understand the point at first, but I get it now. Everything that exists is in automatic relationship with everything else. I can't talk about a light without talking about the darkness around it. I can't discuss my own personal beliefs without mentioning the opposite viewpoint, uh, the opposing viewpoint. What does any of this mean? It means that there is only one system of behavior. There are no more journal entries. All that's left is close to 100 additional abstract photos. I've chosen five of them to showcase. I believe what is pictured here is a collapsing or merging of dimensions, that every part of existence is fusing together with itself. Even though I feel that I understand what is happening, I still can't answer why. Maybe there isn't a why. Uh, the human mind that has evolved to be curious, the human mind has evolved to be curious and to find an understanding, is given a situation that completely l lacks any reason. Uh, the mind is then left searching for something that was never there, meant to be there in the first place. No explanations, no reasons. Sometimes things just are the way they are. It is what it is, basically. Weird can't even comprehend what any of this is the middle looks like a face I guess oh you this looks this looks like a pond or something oh there's a face conclusion this is by James Things have changed since I've started this. A large part of the population is now missing. I have to release this while society is still operating. I have hope that this evidence helps those of us who are left and waiting to vanish. It's to help with your acceptance of the situation that is strange, beautiful, and terrifying. When it becomes your time, just let it happen. It's all you can do. Fighting against it is what brings pain and suffering. I'm aware that there are still plenty of questions left unanswered about all of this, and I'm, very, and I'm sorry to tell you that I don't have the answers. And that's okay. It's okay to not know. We strain ourselves in this world to be knowledgeable of everything. Some of us go absolutely crazy when we don't get the information we want. Why is that? Why get hung up on things like this? The only thing you need to understand is that you and I are a natural part of this world, and this world is a natural part of this universe, and who knows what that's a part of. Uh, whatever it is, is supposed to be here. Sorry. Whatever it is, it is supposed to be here, just as every single one of us are supposed to be here, too. Sorry if that was very different to what I originally play. I, I've just been eyeing this for a while and debating on if I should play it or not. I'm glad I did. Sorry if my reading was very bad. <laughs> but uh, that was Hole by War Garble. Uh, so for the game, I uh, can't really comment on how I usually would uh, the other uh, games I played through Dreams. Um, this one, uh, I guess you could say it's just reading it and the pictures alone help build that atmosphere of just of just being eerie and creepy and seeing the horrible stuff that's happening in the photos, stuff that's happening to these people, just being warped and transforming into whatever and disappearing into the sky. Again, it reminded me a bit of uh, Death Stranding. It was a good read as well. Again, sorry if my reading was crap. Kind of wish there was a... A voiceover itself to read uh, to you but i was happy to read it but yeah a very interesting story uh not gonna go into detail of, like what I, the meaning is behind it and everything i'm just going at face value because i'm not that deep <laughs> if you're looking for a whole synopsis of what this means and what that means i'm not going to provide that because i'm dumb sorry <laughs> but yeah uh story is great uh just reading it the stuff that's going on in this world like what's happening to these people no answers for it it's just happening and it's been happening for a few years now and people i guess just got to accept it in uh, james's time but it's 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 there being documented by the people that i guess are fighting it they're fighting to not have this happen to them and in turn they are able to document what's going on in these uh towns of or cities or people that have been vanishing it's a cool concept it's very weird and creepy and just horrible to think about uh the photos the details in those which is really crazy and wild uh but yeah everything together just makes for a great visual novel and so stuff in there was a little bit hard to read uh having don do what he did with the uh, yeah i'm not gonna say it that was hard to read a bit i was getting a bit choked up too <laughs> but uh yeah if you enjoyed, please do like and subscribe. 
Uh, be cool, stay safe, have a good day, and I'll see you in the next video.